بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم الله رب محمد صلى عليه وسلم نحن عباد محمد صلى عليه وسلم ان شاء الله العزيز اول منشن ا بيوتيفل حديث اوف ذا مسنجر صلى الله عليه وسلم which is related to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember every hadith of rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is beautiful but in the context of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this hadith is really beautiful Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, he reports that the best of creation, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kana rajulani fi bani Israila, that there were two men from the children of Israel. The children of Israel are known as um, the children of Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salam. So meaning that, from the nation of, generally when we say Bani Israel, it refers to the nation of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in one of the previous nations. So there were two men. Uh, then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mutawa khiyaini. Those two men were opposite to each other. فَكَانَ أَحَدُهُمَا يُذْنِبُ Now from those two, one of them would commit sins. وَالْآخَرُ مُجْتَهِدٌ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ the other one would strive in worship. فَكَانَ لَا يَزَالُ لَا يَزَالُ الْمُجْتَهِدُ يَرَى الْآخَرَ عَلَى الْذَنْبِ فَيَقُولُ أَقْصِرْ Now whenever the one who would strive in worship, whenever he would see the sinner commit a sin, he would tell him to stop. He would tell him to stop. He would say, do not sin. فَوَجَدَهُ يَوْمًا عَلَى ذَنْبٍ Now one day he saw the one who would strive in worship, he saw the sinner, and the sinner was committing a sin. فَقَالَ لَهُ He said to him, أَقْصِرْ Stop. You know, leave it alone. Do not commit a sin. Now the one who would commit a sin, he said to him, خَلِّنِي Leave me alone. وَرَبِّي أَبُعِثْتَ عَلَيَّ رَقِيبًا He said to him, leave me. Wallahi, by Allah. You know, have you been sent as, as a watch over me? Meaning that as a watchman. That are you here to come and look at me and what I do? Mind your own business. That this is how it would be. So when a person who, uh, who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he saw a sinner commit a sin. So he would tell him to stop. But this time when he stopped him, the sinner said to him, look, you know, what's wrong with you? Are you here to watch over me? Or are you here to live your own life? So at that time, the one who would Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Wallahi by Allah, la yaghfiru Allahu laka, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. Yeah, but he said, by Allah, Wallahi, Allah will not forgive you. Oh, la yudkhiluka Allahul jannata, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not allow you to enter paradise. He will not let you enter paradise. Allahu Akbar. So when he made this statement, now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَقَبَضَ أَرْوَاهُمَا Now both of them, they, their souls were taken away, meaning that when they passed away, فَاجْتَمَعَا عِنْدَ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ They both came together into the court of Sayyid, uh, the uh, Creator, رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the Universe. فَقَال Now it was said, uh, لِهَذَا الْمُجْتَهِدِ To the one who strive in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَكُنْتَ بِعَالِمًا So Allah said to him, أَكُنْتَ بِعَالِمًا أو كنت على ما في يدي قادرا. الله سبحانه وتعالى said that did you have knowledge over me? Yeah, meaning that did you know what I would do? Do you know what's in my control? Yeah, you know do you have control over my power? You know the power which is in my hand, my control. Then الله سبحانه وتعالى said to the مذنب اذهب 
Fad khulil jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Muslim, the sinner, that go and enter paradise. Bi rahmati with my mercy. Wa qala lil akhar. And it was said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the other one, meaning the one who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, izhabu bihi ila nar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, you know, take him. Take him to hellfire. Allahu Akbar. What a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then um, Sayyidina Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, he added on. He, now this was hadith uh, which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Sayyidina Abu Hurair, he says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَتَكَلَّمَ بِكَلِمَةٍ أَوْ بَقَدْ دُنْيَاهُ وَأَخِرَتَهُ Yeah, that this person He's made such a statement. Yeah, the one who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made such a statement which ruined him in this world and in the hereafter. So now, look at this hadith. Let's analyze it and understand the moral of this hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. So there were two people. One of them was a sinner. He would commit sins. The other one, he would try to worship Allah and he was... In, in, in simple terms of the world, he was a good person, obedient in, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, whenever this person who's obedient, who's trying to worship Allah, who's trying to obey Allah, he would see the sinner commit a sin, he would stop him. But one day what happened? Again, one day what happened? The sinner, he said to the other person, the one who's obedient to Allah, that, you know, leave me. Why are you after me? You know, have you been sent to watch over me? So at that time, this obedient person, yeah, who's trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to him that, do you know what? You will enter hellfire. Do you know what? Allah will not forgive you. Then both of them died. They were in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said to this uh, uh, person who would try to worship Allah that, do you have knowledge over Allah? Do you know what Allah would do? So now from this, what we understand there are two points, few points we would like to take out. First of all, can we judge others? Because this is a common, um, common uh, point or common uh, phrase which is mentioned within the society today that you cannot judge me. So can we judge others? Now, we can judge others on certain things and on certain things we cannot judge others. Yes, so for, for instance, when it comes to the ahkamat, for example, a father can judge a child in different things. A mother would also. Likewise, a person who's a scholar, he would judge the people who would come to him regarding rulings or who's a qadi, a, a judge. Yeah, that's a different case. But generally judging other people, we can judge them on certain aspects. But generally judging a person fully, meaning that what he does, why is he doing this? Why isn't he doing that? We cannot do this. Yes, on certain things in which we have authority and Islam does say judge a person. For example, a person who's a sinner, on certain things we won't give him priority. On certain things, you know, we won't trust him upon that. Yeah, this is a judgment. Why? Because he, he's a sinner and we know that, you know, if we judge him on certain aspects, this, was, this will cause an issue. But generally, judging a person, overall, from A to Z, this is something which is not done within Islam. But of course, if you see a sinner committing a sin, you should stop him. You should try your best. What do we learn from the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama? That if you, know, if you see wrong, yeah, then he should try to prevent it with his hands. If not his hands, then his mouth. If not his mouth, at least know that you know, within your heart, that the action which is being performed is against the Quran and the Sunnah and it's wrong. So we should try to prevent it as much as we can. So when the obedient person, he would stop the sinner, that's something good. That's something which has to be uh, praised. But what went wrong was that when he would say to him that Allah won't forgive you, this is something we shouldn't be saying. Why? Because we do not know about the mercy of Allah. Yeah, when he would say to the sinner that, oh, you won't enter paradise. Yeah, the, again, this, these two phrases which he mentioned, Allah won't forgive you, you won't enter paradise. These phrases, what Sayyidina Abu Huraira says, that these two phrases, they ruined his dunya, this world, and akhirah, the afterlife as well. So, 
a pious person as well, don't think that because you are worshipping Allah, that Allah will guarantee you are guaranteed paradise. No, remember, a person will only enter paradise through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people who are obedient to Allah, the people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people you know, who, who, who strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship. And then the people at the same time who try to you know, guide the sinners and who try to stop them from committing things and they try to bring them towards good, that's perfect. But we cannot say to someone that you will not be forgiven. And see, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like. We cannot say to someone, Allah will not allow you to enter paradise. No. Yes, if he's a disbeliever, that's a different case. But to a believer, we cannot say this. Why? Because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, وَسِعَتْ رَحْمَتِي كُلَّ شيء. That my mercy, you know, it, it surrounds everything. Yeah, then we, لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ That do not be deprived and, you know, do not lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not lose hope from the mercy of Allah. So the mercy of Allah is there. So remember a person, we cannot guarantee, this is where our scholars mentioned that we cannot even, if you see a person who's really pious in this world, really, really, really pious, that you see him and you know, through the night, he's doing qiyam, through the day, he's you know, fasting, worshipping Allah, obedient to Allah, we cannot say that he is guaranteed paradise. Yes, we can say generally that this person, he's a jannati, meaning that his a'mal are good, his actions are good. But we cannot say he is definitely in jannah. This is not something we can say, something we, you know, we can say. Likewise, we cannot say regarding a believer, of course, we cannot guarantee someone hellfire. So you see a person committing many sins, you know, the worst of sins. Yeah, you, any sin you can think of, you know, during the night, partying, alcohol, drinking, during the day, he's just doing all the wrong things you can think of. But he's a believer. He has Iman inside him. We cannot say for guarantee that he's a Jahannamin, he will enter hellfire. So what we need to understand here is that we are not to make these judgments. Yes, we say that these A'mal will lead you to hellfire. You know, if you want to guide someone, you say, look, do not drink alcohol. Why? Because this will this action will lead you to hellfire. And if you end up in hellfire, then that will be severe. You'll be punished severely. That's a different different thing. But saying to someone, Allah won't forgive you, this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive. Why? Because you are you are speaking against the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the moral of the story is that remember when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect. When we stand in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect. At the same time, if you see a sinner, stop him. But do not say to him that Allah won't forgive you. You know, certain phrases which we might hold as light and you know, some, something which is not big. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those phrases. Yeah, why? Because they are against the mercy of Allah. They are against the, the sha'an, the honor and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... Um, a person, he should try to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, stand in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he sees sinners, he should try to guide them, bring them towards Islam. But do not say that this person will be in hellfire. This person is, you know, he won't be forgiven. No, we are not to say this. Yes, we say that he is performing, committing such actions which are leading towards hellfire. That's different. But saying Allah won't forgive him. Who are you? Do you know what Allah will do? So this is something we need to bear in mind. So a lot of the times we say certain phrases which we think that they do not mean a lot, but they have a great effect. So uh, we should never say such kalimat that, you know, which ruin our dunya and akhirah. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stay away from sins. Ameen. Bijahin Nabil Ameen sallallahu alayhi. وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم